we have a situation where we just read one through five, and the next issue we're about to talk about hit shelves right before issue five, which is interesting because the next one we're talking about would should have been like an issue six. They threw it in there as issue zero. Now, it was on the shelves September 28th of 1995. This cover is one of those foil wraparound covers. But Marat Michaels and Alve on this cover. Anyway, it says Nightmare at the top. It's in black, outlined in orange. Nightmare with a staff on the front looking awesome. Uh, in the top left, I believe we've got Logan. It's kind of looking down there at him. All right, so the back is is kind of giving us a glimpse into... Alex passed, has him kind of kneeling on the ground, his wife's hand, you can see her, Logan's in the background, and Jeff laying there dead on the floor, and Alex screaming up in agony. But behind him is like this picture, the image of Connie in the hospital bed. And above that is what looks to be Don Carbone and Nightmare. You see both of their faces. Yeah, this cover is pretty crazy. Gives you an idea of what you're about to get into here. Creator and plot, Rob Liefeld. Script, Robert Lauren Fleming. So our script are never changed here. Pencils, Marat Michaels again. Inks, Alve, Danny Miki, Jonathan Seibel, Marlo Alquiza, and Jamie Mendoza. Colors, Laura Road. Color separation, extreme color, and lettered by Kurt Hathaway. We're going to jump around a little bit here, so kind of bear with me. Our story unfurls in the past with a step back in time, revealing a pivotal moment in Alec Knight's life. We meet Salvador Garba, a ruthless mob enforcer tasked with delivering a brutal message to two associates, Logan and Alec Knight. Alec, known for his moral code, is visibly unsettled by the grim task at hand. Tensions flare, words turn to fists, and in a swift and resolute move, Alec silences Salvador with a kick between the legs. When we open this book, Sal has a guy by the throat and is teaching Alec and Logan about enforcing Alec watches him drop a guy who was apparently skimming from the mob. So Alec doesn't really have a, you know, he's not too keen on enforcing as brutally as some others do in the mob. Now we fast forward to the present day where Nightmare, the masked vigilante, has a man named Vito in a stranglehold squeezing for information about a witness to the tragic hit on Alec Knight and his family. And this is a very similar situation that we had seen in the past where Alec has Vito by the throat, holding him stories up. Shockingly, the witness turns out to be none other than Connie, Alec's wife, who remains in a coma. Vito reveals that Logan, a haunting figure from the past, is now targeting her as the first step in his sinister plan. So yeah, Alec now knows that his wife is awake and plans to be a witness against the mob. Determined to protect Connie and bring justice to those who threaten his family, Nightmare summons his trusty computer-controlled bike, Rosinante, commanding it to transport him to the hospital where Connie lies vulnerable. Amongst the chaos and tension, Alec reminisces about the tumultuous relationship with Connie, strained by his dark involvement with the mob. He had once dreamed of leaving the criminal life behind to secure a safer future for his wife and their beloved son, Jeff. Back at the hospital, Logan, the cybernetically enhanced antagonist. Okay, yeah. Logan's still alive, got his arm cut off, but now he's got a cyber arm that he's using. Logan reaches Connie's room, only to find her absent from her bed. Yet Connie remains in the room, hidden from sight, while Logan narrows in on her trail. Just when hope seems to fade, Nightmare smashes through the hospital window, marking the beginning of a cataclysmic confrontation between the mass protector and his former ally, Logan. Logan, now aware of Nightmare's true identity as Alec Knight, confronts him about the dark and fateful day Alec turned against the family. Do another flashback here. The reader has shown Alec, who challenged the mighty Don Carbone at one point, expressing his vehement opposition to the mob's nefarious dealings with nuclear weapons. This flashback is showing kind of some of the events prior to issues one and two of Nightmare, where Alec apparently realizes that Don Carbone is going to make this deal for these nuclear weapons, and he's out. Alec firmly stated that he would not be a part of such a menacing venture. Now back to the present, the hospital room becomes a battleground as Logan and Nightmare engage in a fierce and visceral struggle. Logan, dripping with malevolence, taunts Alec by invoking the memory of his dearly departed son, Jeff. And as the fight intensifies, Alec seizes a crucial opportunity and incapacitates Logan with a devastating, electrified jolt from his bow staff. With Connie at his side, Nightmare prepares to make his escape, but she is bewildered, questioning why her beloved husband has donned the ominous guise of Nightmare. Before the duo can flee, Logan delivers a treacherous shot to Nightmare's back, 
Undeterred, Alec uses his oversized shoulder pads as a makeshift shield, setting the stage for a ferocious face-off. In the heat of the moment, Logan discloses his knowledge of Alec's involvement in Salvador's demise and vows to exact his vengeance. To kind of elaborate on that a little bit, Salvador had met his end at the hands of Alec, and now Logan feels a little upset about that, considering Salvador was the one who taught both of them. Alec, now fully embracing the mantle of Nightmare, unveils a deadly secret. A blade emerges from the top of his right hand, swift and unforgiving. In a single lethal stroke, he decapitates Logan, closing a grim chapter on their shared history. As Alec Knight departs the scene, he is ensnared by the cold embrace of the police, surrounded by the flashing lights of law enforcement. Unperturbed, he deploys blinding flares to disorient his pursuers and vanishes into the shadows, leaving Connie in the hands of the authorities. He solemnly resolves to watch over her from afar, his transformation into Nightmare now complete. So there you go. I understand why this is a zero issue. You know, we have a glimpse at Alex's origin and what preceded it him becoming Nightmare, but it's just weird because we had a lot of that in the previous issue, so as to why this had to be an issue zero, I'm not absolutely 100% sure. I mean, it looks nice. Maybe that's why. <laughs> they were just like, hey, we gotta get an issue out here that looks good. How about issue six? And they're like, no, no, we can't do that. Are we telling a good bit of his origin? Yeah. All right, then, let's let's make it a zero issue. There's a lot that happens here. We see what happens in the past, plus we get the resolution between him and Logan. And we get to see his wife wake up, which is great. And there's, of course, more references to Don Quixote. I'll go ahead and read this part at the end. I may not be a true knight errant, but you'll always be my lady love. I'll live to serve and protect you. I'll dedicate my victories to you and call upon you in defeat. And from now on, I'm going to love you chastely from afar.